In Science 7, Episode 4, we learn that all living organisms are made up of basic functional and structural unit of life called cell. We also learn that there are certain cell organelles present in animal cell but not in plant cell. In addition to this, there are two types of cells, namely multicellular and unicellular. Multicellular organisms are composed of more than one cell, with groups of cells differentiating to take on specialized functions. Examples of this are plants, animals, and humans. On the other hand, unicellular organisms are composed of one cell only. Examples of this are bacteria, protists, and yeast. There are minute organisms called microorganisms that can be seen under powerful microscopes. They affect us either in good or bad way. The probiotic drinks that we have in the market, like this, contain lactobacilli, which helps us to have healthy digestion. Other microorganisms that are beneficial to us are yeast, which is used in baking and fermentation, phytoplankton as food for marine life, and nitrogen-fixing bacteria used to enrich the soil during the nitrogen fixation. There are harmful microorganisms like Escherichia coli, a bacterium that gives us gastrointestinal illness, and plasmodium vivax, which causes malaria. In addition, athlete's food, commonly known as the is a fungal infection between our toes. Microorganisms reproduce rapidly due to its simple structure and size. But how do they reproduce? In what way microorganisms and other organisms multiply? To answer this, let us differentiate sexual from asexual reproduction in terms of the number of individuals involved and similarities of offspring to parents. Biologically, an offspring is created from a parent or parents in a process called reproduction. In addition, it allows organisms to continue their species. There are two types of reproduction, namely sexual and asexual. Observe these examples and tell the similarities and differences between the parent and their offspring. Write your answers in your observation notes. Right. The ginger is exactly the same as its offspring. On the other hand, we can easily tell that the baby is different from its parents. In this episode, we will learn in detail the two types of reproduction, the number of individuals involved, and the similarities of parent or parents to their offspring. In sexual reproduction, we have cells from the parents, one from the male and the other from the female, united to form an offspring genetically different. In a sexual reproduction, there is only one parent involved producing an offspring identical to the parent. There are different types of asexual reproduction. The first one is binary fission. It involves a single parent divided into two. The results are two genetically identical daughter cells. Examples are bacteria, amoeba, paramecium, and some protozoa. The second one is spore formation. It is a type of asexual reproduction where organisms reproduce by forming spores. Examples of this are red mold, fern, and moses. The third is body. Here, a new organism is formed from a bud which is an outgrowth from the parent. When the bud is separated, it becomes a new organism. Yeast and hydra are examples of organisms that reproduce from body. The fourth type is fragmentation. It is physically splitting the organism into segments, and these segments develop into new organisms. Examples of fragmentation are worms, echinoderms, sponges, and starfish. Regeneration is the same as fragmentation, wherein a cut part can regenerate into a full organism as exhibited by sea stars. 
regrowth or regeneration of lost parts, such as in the case of brittle star and lizard's tail, is not considered a type of reproduction since no organism is born. The fifth is vegetative reproduction. It reproduces offspring from its vegetative organs such as stem, roots, and leaves. Examples are the eyes or dimples of a potato, stems of strawberries, ginger root, and banana. Sexual is different from asexual reproduction since it needs two organisms having sperm and exos collectively known as gametes. When these gametes unite, the process is called fertilization. The product of which is called zygote, which will later develop into an embryo, it will reach maturity and feel it is ready to be born. There are two types of fertilization. Internal fertilization occurs when the fertilization takes place inside the body of the female. Ever wondered why chickens lay their egg? This method is called oviparity. Here, the unborn offspring inside the egg takes its nourishment from the egg yolk. The eggs may have been fertilized before release, as in birds and some reptiles, or are to be fertilized externally, as in amphibians and many lower forms. If the fertilized egg retained inside the female, but the embryo gets its nourishment from the egg yolk, this is called ovoviviparity. External fertilization happens when fertilization occurs outside the female body, like most aquatic animals like fish, amphibians like frogs, salamanders, and newts, crustaceans like crabs and shrimps, and some insects like mosquitoes and mayflies. In plants, sexual reproduction needs a male, which is the pollen, and a female, which is the ovule, the means. A fertilized egg or zygote is produced upon the union of these gametes. The zygote develops into an embryo and eventually into fruits which develop from the ovary that contain seeds which is formed from the ovary. The process of transferring pollen grains from the anther to the stigma is called pollination, which is happening in the flower. To disperse the pollen grains, some pollinators like bees, butterflies, and other factors such as wind and water help to transfer them out. Have a look at the parts of a flower. In general, sexual reproduction involves two parents. The offspring is unique and carries half of the trait from the mother and half of the trait from the father. There is a genetic variation and the organism is more developed. In the asexual reproduction, on the other hand, has one parent and produces identical offspring but inherits the weaknesses of the parent. The organism is less developed, but the rate of reproduction is faster. Now, let us apply what you have learned in this lesson. For learning task 1, identify the type of asexual reproduction shown in the pictures and write a brief explanation for each process. For learning task 2, complete the steps in sexual reproduction on animal and plants by arranging the words on the diagram. After answering the task, make a comic strip of your favorite character that explains the advantages and disadvantages of sexual and asexual reproduction. Here is an example. Write a three-sentence reflection after this lesson in your observation notes. Please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mad Cycle, like our videos, and hit the bell button for updates. I hope you learned in today's lesson. In the next episode, we will differentiate biotic from abiotic components as well as describe the different ecological relationships in an ecosystem. This is Sir Michael Leonard Viano, your science teacher. See you all next time.